For our weekly feature today, we take you to South Africa. Dubbed the Rainbow Nation, it's a country with a diverse culture that's working hard for peaceful coexistence after decades of oppressive segregation laws. Siji has been serving the neglected and remote corners of society for over 10 years now. Let's take a look at how it all started with a few Taiwanese businessmen with a social conscience. Sewing machines and fabric ready, the Zulu woman dressed in navy and white meet up to create garments that could support their families and then some. Life for them turned a new page more than a decade ago when a group of Taiwanese immigrants set foot on African soil. South Africa, a land of copious natural resources and breathtaking scenery, is burdened by its history of gruesome ethnic oppression. Beginning in the late 1940s, the apartheid, the country's 40 years of official racial segregation, stripped its people of color of the basic rights to education as well as medical and other public services. Under oppressive white rule, the wealth and human rights gap rapidly widened. In the 80s, international economic sanctions against South Africa catapulted the country into financial turmoil. To stimulate the economy, the government offered attractive investment packages for foreigners which many Taiwanese businessmen responded to. Among them were Huang Dingling and Wu Guorong, the first city volunteers in South Africa. They wanted to do something for the black majority living in dire poverty. There were very few charity organizations here, and nothing was being done to help the local people. My brother-in-law, Huang Dingling, used to live here. He wanted me to do something for this land. On January 26, 1992, Huang Enwu established Tsiji's liaison office in Johannesburg, marking the beginning of Tsiji's charity mission in South Africa. In 1995, the first large-scale Tsiji aid distribution was held throughout the country, as well as in the neighboring Swaziland. Fifteen containers of clothes donated by the people of Taiwan were given to nearly 20,000 people, a gesture of love from the distant land. The nationwide event sparked interest in many aspiring volunteers, such as Pan Ming Shui, who lived in Durban, a glittering city on the east coast, 600 kilometers from Johannesburg. Pan envisioned the future for the disadvantaged populations through practical means by implementing skill training projects in the black townships and rural areas. To him, self-sufficiency is a golden ticket out of perennial poverty. The house behind me is one of Durban's first three skilled training centers and the beginning of Tsuji's mission in Durban. We showed the women how to support themselves with their own two hands to improve their lives. The skilled training centers were in fact sewing groups sponsored by Tsuji, providing tools and materials for Zulu women to sew and sell garments. To reach more rural communities, Pan teamed up with Gladys and Gemma, a city aid recipient who could speak both Zulu and English. No government comes to people, only Suji Foundation. I believe, of course, since everything has been happening to me, the first person who came and gave us love was Suji Foundation. He gave us clothes, he gave us uh, food, he gave us a lot of things. So I believe. Okay. That's why I, I stop hate. Gladys has been serving as a city volunteer for more than a decade now and has learned to forgive. As a victim of violence spurred by the segregation law, she used to be full of hatred. Now she is living proof that great love is the ultimate antidote to human antagonism and suffering. It's, it's amazing, it's hardly to explain how can I think because whenever I think of Brother Michael and Sushi, I only think of angels. There is heaven. I think they come from heaven. That's what I think because, truly speaking, no one come to the heart of the darkness where our South African 
African people are suffering. I think they come from heaven. This life-changing experience is poignantly shared by many others. When Dora Swane was 13, she lost her left leg in a road accident and lost her sense of self-worth too. It was not until 1995, when Pam Mishra came to her village with skill training projects, that she walked out of her cocoon and became an avid promoter of Tsuji. Doris's sewing skills were passed down from her mother. At the beginning, she had little faith in herself, but we began there with sewing. When she got better, her confidence was boosted, and she started teaching other disabled people. True wealth comes not from material luxuries, but a heart steeped in great love. And that is what Siji's founder, Master Jinyin, devotes her life to, inspiring selfless love and altruism. I saw that love, great love, that's why. I'm not rich in a body, I'm rich inside my heart, in my brain. Life changed significantly for these powerless. To take your eyes to your men, may you please give me money to buy salt. And the man said, oh, he's roaring because of his money. No, we are not those moms now. We are so proud for that. Over 500 sewing groups burgeoned, empowering 14,000 people or so, giving rise to more than 3,000 local volunteers in changing the charity landscape in South Africa. In November 2006, Gladys Ngema became Tsuji's first African commissioner. In 2007 and 2008, 10 others followed in her footsteps including Doris Zwane, leading their communities to care for the sick and poor and forming a powerful grassroots force that has introduced hope into the dark corners of the Rainbow Nation.